Hi everybody. So I've just come on today to share some top talking tips for children who have speech and language difficulties. So maybe your child is already known to the speech and language therapist in the trust or maybe you've been watching the top talking tips over the last few weeks and have thought to yourself mm, my child isn't quite meeting the milestones that would be expected for their age and now you do have some concerns. And if that is the case, please get in touch with me because I'm happy to help and give you any support. I'm available full time. Um, so if you just want to get in contact with me over the Facebook page, like I said, I'd be happy to help. So the first thing I would advise doing is tune in to how your child is currently communicating. So just listen in and work out where they are so are they maybe starting to use sounds or are they maybe beginning to use words on their own? So if that's the case, I would advise to keep your own language quite simple. So spend lots of time talking and playing together, but break your own language down to suit your child's current level of communication. So if they're using one word, maybe just use one or two words combined when you are modeling language. If your child is beginning to use sounds and maybe a wee bit of gesture, try and respond as much as possible and even copy the sounds or the gesture your child is making because that will add meaning to those attempts at communication and it will encourage your child to keep on experimenting with those early gestures and signs. Another really important tip is to join in with their play as much as possible. So your child may not be necessarily playing with age appropriate toys, but that's fine. All children are unique. And if it's what interests your child, that gives a really good platform for you to join in with them and to model those little words through their play. Just try and be the best possible playmate because children learn lots through their play and if you're joining them in their play you're going to be adding lots of valuable interactions and valuable benefits to their play. And just follow their lead. So whatever it is they're interested in, just go along with that. The research tells us that children learn language quicker when it's focused on their own interests and they direct the play rather than adult directed language. So instead of you trying to direct their attention to something else or different activities or toys, just go with what it is they're interested in. So that brings me on to my next point which is model words. So try and think of functional words. And what I mean by that is words that are useful or practical to your child. So things like drink or food or toilet or stop, they're all really beneficial words to model. And the motivating words are really good too. So more, again, go, all done so you can build on your child's interests and those ready steady go games are great because if you do that repetitively and your child starts to familiarize himself with something fun is going to happen when I signal go you can then use that as an opportunity for your child to request go so ready steady go and use a pause to encourage your child to communicate go so that might be just using their eye gaze to look at you or a smile and you can even use Makaton signs so go and if you are knowing to your speech therapist in the local health centre you can contact them and ask for some Makaton signs if you feel that that would be beneficial to your child's communication. Makaton Science ties in with using visuals as much as possible to support communication. Visuals are great because our words are 
sometimes our children hear our words but they're in one ear and out the other and if we're using visuals they're more permanent and it helps our children see what what we mean and it also allows for processing time so the Magaton is fantastic because our children can use that to help them see what we mean so some early Magaton signs this is more again and go so try to use visuals even the use of pictures are great and um, so if your child struggles with maybe transitioning from one setting to another so if you wanted to take them for a walk showing them a picture of them out for a walk is a great way to have them prepare for change Another useful tip is to create opportunities for communication. So we're all really good at anticipating what our children need, but try and think creatively and think, how can I really encourage my child to want to communicate? So things such as if they're really motivated by bubbles or cars or blocks, try to put the things they're motivated by in sight but out of reach so you might put them up on a shelf so that means your child has to communicate with you some way that they want that thing off the shelf so it might start with them looking and making a sound or crying and then that's your opportunity to model the word so oh blocks you want the blocks and the use of repetition is great too to keep trying to encourage those first words to emerge so the more you repeat a word, the more likely it is your child will eventually use the word. Um, another way of creating that opportunity for communication is to give your child something that is hard to operate. So maybe a wind up toy that they can't operate themselves so they have to come and ask you for help. Putting favourite toys or snacks in clear containers so they can see them but they might not be able to open them. So again, that allows you to model, oh, open, I want the biscuits. And to stress those keywords again, using repetition. And giving choices is another way of creating opportunities for communication. So at snack time, giving your child a choice of something that they're really motivated by. So a preference versus something that maybe they're not really that keen on so maybe a banana or a biscuit so you're keeping your language really simple and you're showing them the visuals and if your child uses their eyes to show you or maybe they reach out towards the biscuit just simply say biscuit you want the biscuit and again that idea of repetition is great um, other things to consider are things like background noise so if you're finding that the TV is on or the radio's on or there's lots of noise in the background, it's really important even just for an hour or a day when you are joining in with your child's play to have quite a nice, calm, quiet background so your child can totally focus on the words that you're using and that they're not distracted by something going on in the background. Um, I talked a wee bit about dummies a few weeks ago. so. Um, we would really be recommending that a child over 12 months old doesn't have a dummy. So now might be a good time to start thinking about weaning your child off their dummy or maybe even making a clean break. Because we want our children to want to communicate with us and sometimes the dummy is a little blockage so it might hold them back a wee bit and it might mean that we're missing their subtle cues at communication. So if they are trying to use signs or words, we might be missing those if they have a dummy in their mouths. Also, use their name if you want to gain their attention. So thinking about turning off the background noise and then calling their name and waiting for them to shift their attention to you. I hope you find that useful. There's a few websites now that I'm going to mention that may also be helpful. So the Tiny Happy People is great for general tips on um, how to support communication and activities suited to different children. Um, Sense.org.uk have a lovely play kit 
I think it's called Two Kit for Play and it's adapted play to suit children that may be experiencing speech and language difficulties. So like I said before, if your child isn't really playing at the level you would expect them to be playing at, this toolkit um, has lots of ideas of how to support your children in their play, so that's worth checking out. And ICAM is another great website too for tips and advice on how to support your child's speech and language skills. Please get in touch with me if you do have any queries or concerns or you want a bit more advice on any of the areas I talked about today. Thank you for listening.